Okay, so I'm going to go ahead on and pray us in. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, just thanking you, Father, for these opportunities to share a word with your people. <clears throat> I ask that you would lead me and guide me and help me to speak on this message. I ask that you would use these words to build up and strengthen and edify your people's lives and that you would bring them into a greater revelation of how the enemy attacks us. And I ask this in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So, I've been talking about the opposition that comes to the born-again believer's life as they live their lives in obedience to Jesus Christ. Jesus said that the world will hate us and that those who live godly are going to suffer persecution. And as we live our lives in obedience to Jesus Christ, our commitment to the commission is going to cause us to come in conflict with those who don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you get out there and you talk to people about Jesus, the majority of the people are going to reject the gospel message. The Bible says that many travel the broad road to destruction and only few find the road that leads to life. And when it comes down to the few who only find the road that leads to life, there is going to be a majority that is going to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you get out there and talk to people about repenting and turning away from their lifestyles and giving their lives to Jesus Christ, you are going to come under the hatred and the opposition of the world. They are going to come against you. They are going to ridicule you. And Satan is going to try to use this opposition to wound your heart and cause you to stumble. He is going to raise up people in your family. He is going to use your moms, your dads. He is going to use your children to bring opposition against you, to oppose you, to come against you, to reject you. Because Satan knows that those in your family are those who will be the most effective against you. And he is going to use those in your family to try to hurt you and wound you. We've seen that in the story of Job when Satan attacked Job's life. Satan killed everybody in Job's life except his wife. He spared Job's wife because he knew that Job's wife would be valuable to use against him to try to get Job to stumble. And Satan continues to use the same strategies today. He is going to use the hatred of the world and the opposition of the world. And he is going to use those who are in our families to come against us. And his objective is to use our family members to cause us to stumble. And when I talk to people who are going under tribulation and trials... The main thing that they tell me is that their family is rejecting him. Their children are coming against them. That they are being opposed and fought against by their family. Spouses are coming against their spouses. Uh, husbands coming against wives and wives coming against husbands. I'm talking about unbelieving husbands coming against believing wives and unbelieving wives coming against believing husbands. And this stuff is happening and Satan is going to use the family to try to bring some opposition to, to wound our hearts because this is what he wants to do. He wants to offend the heart because when the heart gets hurt and wounded, the fire of God begins to go, go out and people stumble away from their walk. They get offended. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, it says, and many will be offended and will betray one another and hate one another. And this is Satan's objective 
against the born again believer as they live their life for Jesus Christ, advancing the kingdom of God. Satan is going to move to try to neutralize the born again Christian from moving forward in their walk with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he is going to use the hatred that's going to come from the world and he is going to use the opposition that's going to come from unbelieving family members who are going to reject us and who are going to come against us and oppose us and ridicule us because he knows that those who are closest to us will be the ones that he can use to hurt us the most. And when I talk to Christians that's going under trials, the main thing that they are being affected by is their families rejecting them because of their walk with Jesus Christ. And this is going to happen as we live our lives for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Jesus warned us that tribulation is going to come. And tribulation is grief and sorrow because of pressure and hardships. And this is what's going to happen as we live our lives in obedience to Jesus Christ. As we out there preaching the word of God. As we witnessing in the streets. As we talking to family members. Those who are close to us. They are going to, to reject us. Not everybody is going to receive the message of the gospel. But it's going to stir them up to come against us. And Satan's objective in using our families is to try to wound our hearts so that he can snuff out the love that's inside of our hearts and get us into this place where we are discouraged and we don't want to keep going in our walk. We don't want to press on and keep moving forward. And so many people right now uh, in this day are being wearied down and discouraged because they are being rejected by their family and their friends. But we have to understand that this stuff is going to come. Jesus said that the world is going to hate us, that there is going to have a strong majority in the world that is going to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it is going to cause them to persecute us. The spirit of the world that is upon their lives is going to move upon them to bring opposition against us to try to neutralize our walk in hopes that we stumble away from our commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Satan's objective in bringing persecution against us. He wants to hurt us. He wants to wound us because if he does that, we get bittered and we fall into this place where we get hateful in our heart. Our whole character becomes corrupted because we allowed ourselves to get hurt and wounded. And so many people are broken and hurt and bittered right now because they allowed family members to come against them and they did not guard their heart. So many Christians right now have let go of their commitment to Jesus Christ because they allowed their hearts to be offended. They was walking in the fire and the anointing of God. They was preaching the word of God, ministering, but then rejection came. Then opposition came. Then all of a sudden they started to get hurt and wounded in their heart because they was rejected by their children. They was rejected by their spouse. They was rejected by their mom. And before you know it, they started to get bitter and they began to fall away from their walk. And you know that they're always going to have a motorbike or some type of noise that's going to try to bring some type of distraction. <laughs> but glory be to the Lamb of God. This is what's happening in this hour. Satan is using opposition and rejection against born-again believers to try to get them to be wounded in their hearts where the fire of God begins to go out. And we have to understand that as we live our lives for Jesus Christ, that the world is going to reject us, that our family is going to reject us. Not everybody 
uh, in our family is going to accept Jesus Christ. You may be the only one that believes in Jesus and you might have 15 people that you are close to in your family that despise the gospel of Jesus Christ and they mock you and ridicule. And the reason why they are doing this is because the spirit of the world that is upon them is using them as an instrument to try to wound your heart. Just like Satan used wife, Job's wife in the book of Job to try to get Job to curse God and die. Well, this is the same strategy that Satan is using in today's generation. He is using children against moms. He is using children against dads. He is using moms against children and dads against children. I mean, he is using families against families. And so many people are being hurt because of this type of tribulation that is coming to their lives. Now, I want to read Mark chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. I want us to catch this and lay hold of this. This is a parable about the sower that sowed the seed on different types of ground. And the seed is the word of God. Now, verse 16 talks about the seed that fell on stony ground. And I want you to really catch this because I want you to see the strategy that Satan uses to cause people to stumble away from their walk and their commitment to Jesus Christ. Now, the scripture says this. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. They receive the word of God with gladness in their life. I believe that they are born again. They believe Jesus Christ. They start to walk in a commitment to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And verse 17 says, And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Why does this tribulation and persecution come? It comes because of the word of God. Satan is looking to choke out the word of God in the born again Christian's life. And he is going to use persecution and tribulation. He is going to use hatred and opposition from the world. And he is also going to use hatred and opposition from from family because Satan knows that if he can rouse up family members to come against us to reject us because of the gospel of Jesus Christ it can hurt our hearts and wound us and it is uh, it's more uh, effective when Satan uses a family member in a, a born-again Christian's life because we expect the opposition that comes from the world but those who are closest to us those are the ones that it really makes an impact in our life it really gives us a, a punch in our hearts and Satan knows this so what he does is he uses the people in our lives the ones closest to us family members to reject us and come against us. And like I said, so many people that I talk to, their greatest issues that they are facing in their walk with Jesus Christ is the rejection and the ridicule that are coming from their family members because of their commitment and to Jesus Christ. Because we have to understand that this is going to come. We have signed up for persecution, hardships, and tribulation when we gave our life to Jesus Christ. This came with the package deal. Now, I want to read this scripture that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. And basically, he was testifying uh, about the hardships that he went through. And at the end... He makes a statement that speaks about stumbling. And he says, who is made to stumble? And he's speaking about himself after all the stuff that he goes through. If there was anybody who was made to stumble, it was Paul the apostle. 
Paul went through so much hardships, but because he stayed rooted and grounded in the word of God and keeping his focus, absolutely focused upon God's kingdom, God gave him the power to endure all that he went through. Now, I want to read this scripture for us before I close. It says, are they, are, are they Hebrews? And this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 through 29. It says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in debts often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minors one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In pearls of water. In pearls of robbers. In pearls of my own countrymen. In pearls of the Gentiles. In pearls in the cities. In pearls in the wilderness. In pearls in the sea. In pearls among false brethren. In weariness. In toil. In sleeplessness. In hunger. In thirst. In fastings. Often. In cold. In nakedness. And besides the other things. What comes upon me daily. My, is my deep concern. For all the churches. Now listen to verse 29. He says. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is made to stumble? And do, do not I burn with indignation? Paul went through all kind of hardships. And he was testifying about how the enemy tried to neutralize him in his walk and cause him to stumble. And he said in the end, in verse 29, he says, who is made to stumble? And do not I burn with indignation? But we see that Paul did not stumble in his walk. And we see what was the key to his progress and his victory. In verse 28, he says, Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily is my deep concern for all the churches. Paul wasn't focused on all the hardships that he went through. He wasn't focused on all the trials and the tribulation, the rejection he faced, the stonings, going into prison. He was absolutely focused upon God's kingdom. His concern was for the people of God. His concern was absolutely focused for God's kingdom. And because of this, it gave him the victory. Because of this, he was more than a conqueror. Because of this, he was able to get through all that he went through for the kingdom of God. And this is where our focus needs to be when this opposition is coming. We have to protect our focus and guard our hearts with all diligence because Satan is trying to use the trials and the tribulations in our lives to cause us to stumble and get offended in our walk. And we can't be so centered on our families rejecting us. We can't be so centered on the world bringing opposition against us. We can't be so centered on this going wrong and that going wrong and this not going right and that not going right and what he said and what she said. We need to be absolutely focused upon God's kingdom because in being absolutely focused upon the kingdom of God, God will give us the strength to have victory. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Let's not be so focused on all the trials and the tribulations that we are going through. Let us focus upon God's kingdom. Let us reshift our focus from the problems to the promise. And let us focus absolutely on advancing God's kingdom and staying close to Jesus Christ. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Y'all be blessed. And y'all have an awesome and amazing day today.